The land across from Blennerhassett's island home had been granted to Alexander Parker for his Revolutionary War service and was renamed for him as Parkersburg in 1810. It was chartered by the Virginia General Assembly in 1820 and rechartered as a city in 1860. During the Civil War, Union General George McClellan's first invasion into the Confederacy was through Parkersburg. The once feisty but now subdued historical city in West Virginia was a river transportation hub and a facilitator of the nation's early oil and gas industry. After the Civil War, the entrepreneurs and wealthier residents of the frontier town constructed the best houses of that time in the latest styles and with the finest materials. Today, the Park Place homes display more than 10 or so colonial types of architecture and is occupied by apparitions of an Ohio River settlement's legacy. The town eventually became the second largest city in West Virginia for a while. Many of its prominent citizens, some serving in prominent political and financial enterprises, were laid to rest beneath funerary splendor and fading memorials at the Riverview Cemetery. Apparently one of the most notable and respectable of residents was Peter Godwin Van Winkle who represented West Virginia in the United States Senate in 1863 to 1869. He died in Parkersburg on April 15, 1872. His sprawling home to this day tricks viewers into believing that ghostly meetings may still be underway there. A biographical sketch of Van Winkle was published in the Order of the Odd Fellows Guardian of Chicago 111, of which he was a member. It is at such a moment we realize the gathering darkness of the tomb over the days of our mortality. We realize the loosening of the silver cord, the breaking of the golden bowl, the dropping of the pitcher at the fountain, the wrecking of the wheel at the cistern. For man goeth to his long home. Our friend and brother, 
has passed the years of his appointed time. The days of the years of his pilgrimage are numbered. With the evergreen as an emblem of immortality, his remains were committed to the silence of the grave, for the memory of the righteous shall be in remembrance forever and ever. Not far away in this garden of the deceased is a large monument called the Weeping Woman. Her legendary fame stems not from physical life, but the afterlife. She watches over the Jackson family plot in the back of the Riverview Cemetery and sometimes takes a stroll. The pure of heart are encouraged to bring her a token, a coin, a flower, etc., or at least to show respect. If her visitor is not respectful, her spirit is known to trip people and pull their hair. Sometimes her hands move in photographs.
Captain Neal apparently lived relatively alone and in poverty until his death. He left all his property after debts to his daughter Mary Neal Foley, except for his own plot, which he left in custody of his son, James Harden Neal, for the use and benefit of his slave, Frank, quote, who should be emancipated and restored to that freedom and liberty which the God of nature gave him, unquote. Under the moon I want to see I heard it's not that far away It's where the bright lights Never seem to go to sleep Across a broken faded road Take me down to where the moon flowers grow You know that's where I've always wanted to be down to where the moon flowers grow So walk beside me and the way we will go Grammy used to go there when she was a child She tells me I can go there soon Daddy knows that when I get there I will find This sacred garden where they bloom Take me down to where the moon flowers grow You know that's where I've always wanted to be Take me down to where the moon flowers grow So walk beside me and the way Take me down to where the moon flowers grow you know that's where I've always wanted to be Take me down to where the moon flowers grow So walk beside me 